So I am Anthony Folks. I'm an artist, arts educator, with a focus on material culture studies. Is that music in the background? It is. <laughs> So today we are going to talk about the Kuba cloth, which is a raffia textile, and it comes from uh, Congo, Central Africa. Kuba cloth ties into my practice aesthetically. I'm interested in the culture of the Kuba cloth. I'm also interested in the abstract pattern making of the Kuba cloth. So in this workshop, we are going to make a collage that is based off of Kuba uh, cloth and so we are going to use collage which then ties into the patchwork and then the pattern making the kuba cloth is a simple woven textile that is made from the strands of the raffia palm kuba textile is a multi stage process that involves the men women and children of the clan the uh, children, they go and, you know, they help gather and prepare the raffia to be woven. The men do the weaving. They then have to, like, pound it so that they can soften it up. And it's still, like, I don't, like it's still rough to the skin. And so what happens in that process, you will get holes in the um, textile. And so that's when the patchwork comes into play. Women, they use patchwork to cover up those holes and so then you get the more abstract patterns you'll never see you know two couple clothes that are the same you'll see similar patterns but you won't see the same the couple cloth is very much connected to family and ancestry one of the things that they use the couple cloth for is when the person dies they collect as many couple cloths as of the same pattern as they can and they bury it uh, with that person and so what happens is that person goes to the afterlife and then they're recognized by their ancestors because of the patterns. Both men and women, they use the kuba cloth to make skirts that are worn in ceremonies. The uses of the kuba cloth has varied over time. Um, one thing uh, people do is they collect the kuba cloth. Um, it can be a sign of wealth. The more of the kuba cloth that you have, it's a sign of nobility or royalty within a, a kuba clan. And so when a pattern is made, um, it's normally passed by uh, word of mouth and then copied. And then when a new pattern is made, that pattern is then uh, named after the person who made that pattern. So there's really no written record of, uh, you know, where patterns come from. And so a pattern just becomes a part of someone's clan in that way, where it's then like passed down from um, one person to the next. So I'm, so I'm assuming that if, um, you know, we'll say, you know, Itunu, uh, Itunu Alua made this pattern and then Itunu Alua is the author of a pattern that becomes the Itu Nua Lua pattern. And then, you know, that's her pattern to someone makes a variation of that pattern or they make a completely new pattern and then that's Tamika's pattern. Today, I'm gonna to be using uh, my own Kuba cloth as inspiration for my pattern. And I'm gonna be using black construction paper and then applying uh, some brown paper on top. Uh, to create the pattern that mimics this. If you would like to uh, take a moment and just uh, look up Kuba cloth and see the different patterns that you might wanna just uh, use as inspiration, by all means do that, or you could just come up with your own thing. Abstraction is key, repetition is key. For today's workshop, here are a few tools and materials we will use brown paper, black paper to create our pattern, one pencil, one sharp object for cutting, glue, one roller, and a bone folder, and also a ruler. One of the ways for me to create that pattern is gonna be using a ruler and a pencil.
using my pencil, I'm gonna mark every other diamond. And these marks indicate the ones that I'm gonna be cutting out to create my pattern. Once you cut out this square, you want to put this to the side because this is going to, you're going to use this later um, to help layer and um, build on your pattern. To give it that cuba cloth feel, fold the edges of paper to kind of emulate that forward facing seam. This will um, help, you know, sort of give the illusion of the Kuba cloth. So using glue or an adhesive, I've attached some uh, black construction paper to create a foundation. This is gonna be um, the black in my pattern so I can create that high contrast. So now this is already um, attached. Um, I have my forward facing seams, which is just the uh, paper folded over and then glued. So now I've cut my pattern. And as you can see, it's a little um, asymmetrical. So you have, uh, it's a little off kilter at the ends, but then that makes it a little bit more authentic. So I'm gonna center that as best I can. So what I'm gonna do is gonna take an adhesive and attach this to the background and then we're gonna make this permanent. So with my excess squares, I'm gonna take these and further create that diamond shape pattern. Make it a little bit more intense. And so now I'm gonna actually use glue. So because I'm using glue, this is going to give it a little bit of um, dimension because it's not going to be as flat. One of the reasons I'm drawn to the checkerboard pattern is the high contrast. Um, 
when I was a child, we had a checkerboard pattern kitchen that was black and white. And I don't know, some like as I make my own work, it falls into my own practice. I'm always using that checkerboard, that high contrast. I'm just connected to it in a way. Um, so what I'm doing is basically using a adhesive to basically patchwork in a sense. So that's like my way of using like uh, an applique or, you know, replicating the applique. You'll see the same shape over and over, but it's never so symmetrical everything is off just a little and it's almost like um it's like it's it's like watching music live where it's spontaneous and that's in that way you know just a little like it's a little off you know <laughs> If you want to make this project archival, you can add some matte medium on top to uh, protect it from any um, aging. And here's our collage side by side, the Kuba cloth. Thank you for joining me. I hope you leave this workshop feeling a bit more inspired.